Hey guys, the Tech Prepper, hope you're all doing well. Today's gonna be another unedited short on everything that's going on. And in fact, there was an experience I had last night and this morning, one related to a power outage and the other related to some HF communication failures that were 100% out of my control. So let's dive into that. So I'll try not to keep this too long. So last night around 8 p.m. local time, all the power went off in the neighborhood, but the only thing that was running was pretty much this entire ham shack minus this uh, AM CW uh, receiver. Everything was running off of the Epic power gate, which has uh, right now dual fuel connected. Uh, the first is the AC mains. This is connected to 110 AC. This went out, but everything cut over then to the battery right here and I have a very small 20 amp hour battery so it was able to continue to run on receive the HF transceiver uh, the two tablets here and then on this side here we've got my VHF bulletin board system connected to the VHF transceiver so I thought, hey, this is a great opportunity to go and test out some things. And I had planned to check, for example, like local weather over HF. And I had a gap in some of my field cards. So uh, this morning I went ahead and pulled out my old field cards. And as you can see here, I had my old Winlink cheat sheet from my original call sign. So this is fairly old and I was missing a few things. So Winlink has this ability to uh, query a special uh, to address called inquiry with a special subject called request. And then in the body, you can put these catalog keywords. I was missing the full list. So this morning in preparation, I knew I wanted to find the full list. So I did ask for the full list and it gave me hundreds of special tokens or special keywords that I could request data from um, over radio. And the ones that I was interested in is prop WWV. This gives me the space weather prediction center uh, solar activity and geomagnetic storm activity. Uh, prop three day gives me a propagation three day report. I wanted local weather for Arizona in the Phoenix area. This gives me a five day forecast. So that list is pretty massive. So for the Buy Me A Coffee members, I will be creating a new field card, mostly because uh, this field card is really old and it's not out there. Uh, my new field cards look like this. They're on the business card size uh, laminating patches. So I'll put that there. And yeah, I know there could be a larger list here, but people are welcome to make a copy of that and um, adjust for, especially for the areas in their own. So one of the perks for the members, but outside of that, I have been working on off-grid prediction. So this morning I wanna show you the latest iteration of my uh, ET prediction app that is based on VelCap. And the design goal is 100% offline and simple to use. And to do that, I have to do some compromises. And what was interesting is when I was going through this testing, we had a full uh, solar geomagnetic uh, event that is still going on, which was preventing me from doing the testing, which prompted this video. So before we do that, let's head on over here. So a little bit of everything today, guys. And uh, if you guys recall correctly, I had been using uh, a offline Voice of America capture analysis program uh, that has been floating around for a while. Uh, my program actually did a few other things. So we could put, for example, the receiving call station in this case is going to be NO or N0DAJ, power level five, the mode is JS8. And then it spits out this graph here. Again, I did not write the a bit that does the graphing, uh, but I did write all of the other pieces under the hood. So when I wanted to go test, for example, the HF prediction, uh, what was missing today was my ability to uh, craft these messages. So for example, if I go to my sent messages, you can see here, the first one that I sent was to inquiry. The subject was request and the body payload was list. They gave me a massive list of everything that it's capable of returning to you over the air. But the one that I was most interested in was the second one here where I wanted the propagation for WWV. Uh, my BBS also has that information, but it requires a internet connection to get to it. So what this looks like, and we'll go into our inbox and it should be this guy right here. 
And um, this is where training comes in. So every three hours, the Space Weather Prediction Center uh, will post these messages. And you'll have something there called like the K index uh, that is significant. You'll have numbers related to uh, geomagnetic storms. So we have a G4 event, solar radiation S3 event, and there's a few other things. So I wish I had it. But in my field notebook that I'm preparing to put together for sale, shameless plug, uh, I want to be able to go and inventory in plain English a table that when you get those reports from SWPC, you know, what does a solar flux of 168 mean or a K index of 5.33 without all the nerd stuff? And what do the various geomagnetic storm like G1, G2, G3, G4, G5 mean? So that is coming. But uh, the reason why I was curious about space weather was this morning I was testing out this new version of the ET Predict app, which is coming out on Thanksgiving Day. And again, I wanted this to be nerd free. So unlike that little command line program I showed you, we can expand this here. Few pieces of uh, things that are happening here. Number one, we are being geodetected to my location using onboard GPS or where you configure your location. We can put in a call sign. So right here, we'll go ahead and put N0DAJ and we'll search and offline, no internet. In fact, I wanna show you there's absolutely zero internet. You can see that the Wi-Fi is completely blank. It is using offline maps here. It's dropped the pin that station is near Wickenburg, Arizona. And then we get uh, the city he's in, the state, zip code, grid calculated, lat long, distance from my location and the bearing from my location to his. And then what I wanted to be able to test was the ability to do this new thing where I can put my output power level. So I was doing 20 watts and then I can select one of these different modes. So he is an RDOP HF station. And then I just do predict and on the fly, it just calculated for, let's see what time it is here. 1700 UTC using that circuit path, uh, my geolocation, his geolocation, 20 watts of output power in the mode it calculates all the bands with a reliability. And I've taken some concessions here to make this uh, usable. It's not super heavy nerd focus. If you need that, just access the VOACAP tools yourself. And then uh, we can also go to later and it's a rolling 24 hour window. Uh, and you can see that the next window here will be 1800. And uh, if there isn't a prediction above 90%, it doesn't show it. And that's mostly because in the field, I wanna be able to um, make sure I'm able to make my contacts. I don't care about information that's not here. So in this example, you can see there's actually quite a bit of coverage, uh, but for whatever reason, I would go back over to this station over here. I would try to go check my WinLink email. So I went to actions, connect, and then I would go down here to, let's see, let's back out a little bit. Transport was RDOP. That was the mode that I had listed there. And then we want to show the RMS list. And um, it said that I think 30 or 60 was open. Hold on one second. Let's go back over here. There'll be an integration between those two apps later. So we'll do the predict. Yeah, so 30 meters, 40 and 60. I believe his station only has, does not have 30 or 60. And uh, we should have a prediction of 100% on 40 meters or 7.1 megahertz. So if we go over here to, boom, we'll click this guy and connect. Earlier this morning, it absolutely was not working because of the solar event. So not likely to work, mostly because of everything that's going on with the uh, solar storm that's in flight. Again, we can see here, if we go back to the inbox and take a look at that, uh, Every, all of that data suggests that it's not going to happen. But uh, long story short, uh, I'm really happy with how high speed this is and easy to use. For example, let's go ahead and say that we want to now close this. We'll reset all that. It clears everything. We'll put in the call sign for, let's say, KM4ACK. We'll search for that again offline. And uh, we can see here that he's in Tennessee, 1,456 miles. And let's see if we can even get him on a peer-to-peer -peer RDOP. 
and it looks like on 12 meters, 10 meters right now, and that's the reliability. So guys, I'm working on trying to make and simplify all of this stuff. A lot of it has to do with me taking software that's out there, putting some glue code to make it zero configuration, and then in a lot of cases also making it so that uh, all of the really difficult pieces, I just assume some very reasonable defaults that are more conservative uh, so that you're able to make uh, these contacts with simplicity. So today I really did want to go out in the field, but the fact that there is a crazy solar storm going on, there's no point. So I just wanted to give you the tour. And then guys, again, shameless plug here. Um, I don't want to have to ever go back to the corporate world. If you do have, or do like the content on this channel, like what I'm working on, uh, please consider supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. The link is down below. And uh, the members, among other things, get early content access ad-free. They get access to the field cards. They get the monthly live stream. There's something called a monthly nerd hour, which will be going through this build of MCOM tools here at the end of the month. Uh, the source code is all public. So that is one thing that's out there, but I tend to talk about it more on the Buy Me A Coffee side. Anyway, so uh, the reason why I wanted to do this was just to show you, even though you know what you're doing, if you fall into that camp, there could be things that are preventing you from making that contact. So uh, in general, I know which stations I get into. I know that my equipment does work. I know that how much power I need. I've got my prediction tools. And then today I'm like, something's happening. There's, I should be making it into this station. I checked the uh, audio levels. And then sure enough, you know, what happened was outside of my control, there is a, a geomagnetic storm in flight. So anyways, I am working on also incorporating all of this information, knowledge into a, a two to three day field training exercise or training camp that's coming up next year. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.